Hey, what's up guys, Jay's Two Cents, and we are starting work on Skunk Works, finally. With its specifically tuned copper base and maintenance-free plug-and-play operation, the EVGA 980Ti Hybrid offers ultra-fast gaming performance at the lowest temperatures possible. Click the link in the description for more details. So the orange build is moving forward, and we're going to go ahead and start uh, some of the vlogs here. And I know I already did a vlog showing you some of the parts I was putting in. And because of the fiasco I had with the block on uh, the motherboard not fitting, I decided I was going to go ahead and change a few other things while I was in there. Completely unnecessary and mostly cosmetic, but hey, that's, that's the story of my life. So I got all the new stuff that I needed there, the new block for the motherboard that fits it properly. Um, this right here is actually... Uh, the clear Evo block I'm going to be using, I've got to clean it, I've got a little bit of blue chilling in there right now from this was actually the one that was in the Parvin build. We've got a new Supremacy Evo right here in black that I've got to find a use for. I actually cannot find the installation kit for this. I don't know what to do with it. It's some, lost somewhere in the water cooling closet. But anyway, I've already installed the motherboard blocks, the proper ones on here. I'll show you guys those in a minute, but we're going to start with doing the orange tops here on the Corsair uh, Dominator Platinum RAM. A lot of folks have asked, Jay, where did you get those tops? Holy crap, what other colors are available? I got these directly from Corsair. That's why they're packaged like this, because they're not for sale individually. They have a special edition 16 gigabyte kit of RAM, uh, the Dominator Platinum series. If you guys hear chirping birds and stuff, the windows open. It's a nice day outside. Oh, and there's the coolant. Uh, as you guys can see, it has not fallen out, which is one of the reasons why I mixed it and let it sit. I wanted to see if it would fall out, and it has sit mixed in perfectly in the uh, PC Pure coolant there from Primo Chill mixed with some Mayhem's orange dye. But anyway, um, so they have the orange tops that are part of a kit already, and I requested these individually, which they graciously sent. Uh, but normally you cannot buy these individually, so I just want to kind of put that out there. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and put the tops on. These are some tiny, 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 if it'll focus. Come on, focus. These are some really small Allen uh, heads right there. Yeah, very small, as you can see compared to my fat thumb there. So I was lucky enough that I actually had a Torx bit that fit in there just fine. I think it's like a T1 or a T2, like something super small. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and change those out and then we'll see how they look. So I've got the top bar off of one of the uh, Corsair Dominator Platinum sticks, and I wanted to show you here kind of how the screws work. As you can see, they just sort of push through and then kind of like, where's my fingers at? Holy crap. They just kind of like clamp together. They go all the way through the hole there, both sides of the holes. This is the most festive Christmas baby in all of Christmas. This is the most festive baby in all of Christmas. Yay. Say hi, Internet. No, don't grab the memory. Oh, man, she's reaching for the RAM. Say hi, Internet. Say hi, Internet. Ah, uh, yeah. You're so freaking cute. I didn't want to eat you. <laughs> now, one thing to keep in mind is these, these are not the lighted bars. Uh, some of these, like special edition ones or lighted versions, have kind of like see-through cutouts right here that... LEDs that are in between the heat spreader right here, right down in there, will light on both ends. And then you've got a plastic bar very similar to this that will just kind of, it'll sit in there and then the light will reflect through the bar and then show up through the top right here. So I just wanted to kind of show how that works for some folks who may have never seen the inside of Dominator RAM. Uh, I, don't, I do not have the lighted version, so we won't be seeing any lights on these, unfortunately. I mean, cool to have orange LEDs though, right? Then again, I would have had to use Corsair Link, which I don't want to use anyway. All right, so here they are. Yeah, I mean, I want to mention this real quick. A lot of people ask me why I got the orange tops instead of just taking these off and painting these. Uh, valid question, especially since that's pretty much the option most of you guys would have to go because, like I said, these are not readily available by themselves to the public. So because I had the option of getting these, uh, you know, being a big YouTuber in the PC space does have its benefits, and I do like to leverage that when I can. I went with the orange tops because they're anodized. They're not, uh, the paint isn't gonna flake off. I don't have to worry about taking the time to paint it or worry about the tolerances for these small holes. These do fit pretty snug on the RAM. And uh, it's not gonna cover up where it says Dominator DDR4. It's gonna all show. However, these are uh, very, very paintable. It's very easy. 
So it's something that I would, I'm even gonna keep these around in case I ever change the color scheme again. I can paint these and then take the orange tops off. But I'm always a fan of anodizing when you can get it. I mean, these are aluminum or aluminium, depending on which, uh, you know, country you're from. Then uh, you guys would know aluminum, when you, when you anodize it, you basically put it in a chemical bath, the pores open up, it absorbs the dye, and then the metal itself becomes that color. It doesn't flake off, it doesn't scratch off or chip. Uh, it actually strengthens the aluminum as well. So I like anodizing when you can, and it's actually a pretty good, a pretty good color match to all the other orange I'm gonna be using. So yeah, there's that. Let's go and look at the motherboard. So here's the motherboard, my SOC Champion. You guys saw the video of me trying to put on the other block, which fit down here, but the VRM block did not fit. As you can see, here it is. Uh, some people might automatically be going, what the heck, Jay, why is it clear, plexi, and nickel? Well, that's because EK, for whatever reason, has not made a black version for the motherboard, but this is all that's available. So I decided to go ahead and switch, like I said, all of the blocks to clear, including the ones for the graphics cards. Now this is one of the blocks right here. It's actually on a 980 Ti. I already had this block, so I had him send me two more. That way I didn't have to waste one. Uh, this is what it's gonna look like. Granted, this one here has the chrome or nickel plated back. I won't be using that. I'll be putting the black ones on. Uh, I like it for a couple of reasons. One, it's gonna be lighter because it doesn't carry all the way to the end. And two, I'm gonna be able to see inside. Because if you remember, I said I have a feeling that my block uh, on the Titans might be getting clogged in there because the temperatures have been steadily going up and the uh, flow inside the loop is very, very poor. So I'm gonna be taking out the other blocks and I figured instead of disassembling them and cleaning them, I'm gonna do a separate video on that that won't Indic you know, won't determine how long my system is down. So I'm gonna be putting the clear blocks in like this all around, plus you'll be able to see the orange fluid in there, which is gonna be really nice, at least if I was looking up at the system. I don't have an inverted system, so you won't see it. But you'll see the orange going through here, through the CPU block, and through the VRMs. So I just wanted to show that. Um, yeah, we're, we'll do that. What I'm gonna do right now, too, is I'm gonna get this kind of situated here. I'm gonna put my 5820K in here just so that I can get it spaced up properly, and then, that's actually wrong. It's bugging me right there. There we go. I might take this bracket off right here and paint it orange as well, because that black kind of stands out as being improper. I don't know, we'll see. We'll see what I do. A lot of these builds, I just sort of do them. I don't plan out everything very, very, very well. I just sort of go. I think you guys have noticed that. Uh, but anyway, I gotta clean that blue out, like I said. I've got to switch the internal jet in there for the uh, X99 or the 2011 socket. That way we have the proper flow right now that's set for Z97 or, uh, you know, like 4790K, 6700K, et cetera, et cetera. But anyway, we'll figure out these fittings and how all this is going to go together. Because as you can see, we've got a lot of fittings really close together. Here, 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 and here. That all of these have to tie in. And I want it to look neat at the same time. And that's what she looks like with the orange rim. I, it's, it's funny how it, it doesn't look like the rims covers were gonna match the orange on the motherboard, but they they do, they look pretty damn good. Let's take the fluid, oh, just kind of put that over here too. So you can see we got a pretty nice shade of orange going. It's not orange, it's more of a burnt orange, but I really like the way that that looks. That looks really, really good. And once it's flowing all through the blocks and you know, you're gonna have, you have three of these bad boys chilling in there. It's not gonna look so bad. I, one of the things I mentioned earlier that I did too was I, I'm replacing all of the fittings in my system uh, with the, if you really see that, I'm replacing them with nickel plated fittings instead of black. And I've got all new nickel plated uh, revolver fittings for the hardline tubing because I just kinda wanna bring a little bit of bling to the system. I've always thought orange and bling looked really good, like chrome or nickel plating. So we're redoing all of these fittings as well. Completely unnecessary, but just fun. So why wouldn't we? There we go, all clean, and now it's got the proper uh, jet plate in there for 2011-3. So this is gonna be a challenge. I mean, look, look how close together these are. Um, I want this side to be the inlet. I don't. It doesn't matter which order it goes in, whether it goes chipset, CPU, VRM, or CPU, chipset, VRM, and out. It doesn't matter. It's all going to be the same at the end of the day. Uh, not to mention, this does not really get very hot. This is just 
honestly is going to be a lot of uh, aesthetics here. The VRMs can get pretty hot during overclocking, uh, but again, like I said, it's not going to matter at the end of the day. But I think it looks good. As you can see, I went with all the nickel plated fittings, so it's going to look really good. But right now, we're going to do a little bonus content here in this vlog. I'm going to head over to the Nissan, uh, Fontana Nissan Race Shop, which has my car right now. We'll do a little vlog over there. We'll talk with Chris, who's a GTR master mechanic, working on my car, and we'll just kind of do some sneak peek of what's coming up with the the 370Z Nismo. If you don't follow me on social media, you should, because you would already know that I bought a 370Z Nismo to replace the 350 automatic. Transition. You gotta take out all the exhaust. And they still have carbon fiber drive shafts in the 370s, right? Yeah, these are carbon fiber drive shafts. Here's my uh, resonators there. So I imagine when he's in here, he inspects all like throw out bearing and all that stuff. You don't typically replace that unless it goes bad, or does that come with the new clutch kit? All right, guys, so this is Chris over here, master mechanic at Nissan, Fontana Nissan Race Shop. Works on mostly stuff like this over here, GTR there, GTR there. He's made a little time for my little poor man's sports car. Uh, all right, what are we doing right now? I'm installing a, a new pilot bushing for the crank set. Look at that. So that's my new lightweight flywheel, right? Yes, sir. Is there a uh, is there a, a bedding process that happens with a new clutch like this? Just uh, drive to drive reserved for about 500 miles. Okay, that's going to be hard. Most spirited driving. Okay, so we we did the what JWT Wolf kit on this, right? Correct. So that's considered a stage two. Uh, absolutely. So what what's that going to be like compared to the OEM clutch and pedal feel? Um, OEM clutch pedal feel is going to be the same. The uh, advantage to this flywheel is going to be that the uh, it's going to rev up faster because there's less rotating mass. It did feel like this car revved pretty slow. Uh, you know, when, it, when in, in neutral, if I revved it, I don't know if maybe the electronic throttle just wasn't responding as fast because it's in neutral, but it felt kind of slow. Um, the difference in flywheel weight is probably about 10 to 15 pounds. Right, and that's a lot of unsprung weight there to, to be turning. Correct. All right, so that'll hopefully get some revs up quicker there. Uh, am I going to smell anything while this is breaking in if I'm driving it gingerly? Probably not. Okay. <laughs> what the old clutch look like? This it right here? No, that's new. I'm curious as to what that uh, pressure plate looked like. Because it was stinky if I got on it. There's your flywheel, hot spotted and everything. Okay, so this is all bad. Correct. Right. So this guy, this guy uh, before me was doing probably a lot of neutral drop or clutch drops and burnouts? Most likely. But uh, you can see the glazed portion of the uh, actual... Uh, uh, oh yeah, clutch plate itself. So this glazing here, is this why I was getting some intermittent slipping? That's where I was slipping, yes. Because it wasn't slipping all the time, but every now and then it seemed like it would just randomly slip on me. So I don't know if it was pressure plate or what. Both. See your hot, see your hot spots on your pressure plate. So I made the right call then, thinking it didn't feel right. Correct. Hey, not bad for a guy who owned an automatic. Okay, so this is Scott. Scott is my parts Hello. guy here at Fontana Nissan, and you were founded the race shop. I did. How long ago was that? That was about seven years ago. And why did you do that? I mean, dealerships aren't new, normally synonymous with performance shops or right. motorsports. Well, seven years ago, I met the owner of uh, Fontana Nissan. We both competed in the same uh, race series, uh, Red Line Time Attack. And we became friends, and he ended up offering me a job here. Uh, he wanted to start a, a performance division for the dealership. And I was already doing something similar to this in, for another company. So he brought me in, gave me a computer, folding table, and put me on the stairs and said, make it happen. So, so, so it helps having a dealer owner that's an enthusiast. Yes. You're not just a parts guy, you also have a, a unlimited class Sentra, right? I do. But uh, no, it's, it's, a, it's an unlimited class uh, a B13 Sentra. Uh, we're pushing about 400 horsepower to the wheel. That thing looks light though, it's gutted, right? It's completely gutted, caged, uh, and custom arrow. The car weighs about 2,300 pounds. Mm. So it's uh, very sensitive uh, in every which way, with, you know, whether it's taking off or turning, braking, everything, uh, it does really well. All right. But uh, you just gotta drive it, you know, just like a front wheel drive. And I've got a friend that loves his GTI Golf, and uh, I keep telling him, I personally can't drive a front wheel drive. If I get into a, like a good simulator with a front wheel drive car, I'm off the track. Because it's backwards from rear wheel drive in terms of getting on the throttle, you turn wide, get off the throttle, it turns in, which is, you know, obviously in a, in a rear wheel drive car, you get on the throttle mid-turn, you start to go wide or start to ass swing out. So it's so backwards from what I'm used to. Yeah, I mean, you just got to be brave and, and trust the car. You know, if the right. car starts, you know, 
losing grip and, yeah. and you're oversteering, your tendency would be to, to lift on the throttle, whereas with the front wheel drive, you actually gotta yeah. stay on it and let your front tires pull you out of it. So you you also are a, a moto enthusiast, right? I am. So you're you're a motorcycle rider as well as a, a, a race car driver. These are facts. These are, all right, so go ahead and tell everyone. You got a channel. Go ahead and tell everyone about your channel. Uh, our channel is uh, the Adventures of Scott and Carrie Ann on YouTube. Uh, I'll put a link. I'll put a link in the description too, so you guys can see it. And uh, basically, uh, my my girlfriend and I were we're moto vloggers. And basically, you'll follow us on our adventures, whether it be supermoto, uh, uh, dual sports, or on sport bikes. I like when you and your girlfriend are riding because you have radio with each other, so you yes. can hear each other's audio. Yes. As you, you know, you're, you've got two different camera perspectives, hers and yours, and you switch back and forth and you're editing between what's going on. Seems like she's always breaking down though. I see a lot of push starts. What's, what's up with that? <laughs> that was her supermoto she just bought. Right. Uh, we were having issues with, uh, with the battery. Because she, she uh, went to that supermoto day and fell in love with them, right? Yes. We went to a SoCal supermoto school. And uh, she had a blast, and two weeks later she had a, a supermoto to the collection. So there you got, I mean, as you can see right there, he's he's not, where the hell am I? Okay, he, he's not only a, uh, like I said, a race car driver, but he's he's a motorcycle uh, rider, that goes out and does videos on that, with a female, which is already like rare. Yeah, she's a unicorn. She's a unicorn, right? She, she seems like a pretty confident rider too. She is. I, I don't do motorcycles, not because I don't trust myself, but I don't trust anyone else on the road. So you guys are already braver than me. Right. So this question actually came from one of my followers. The Akibono compared to the Brembo's. I mean, they're very similar design, right? Uh-huh. Akibono versus Brembo, which one and why? Uh, Akibono with a few modifications or better brakes, I believe. Uh, modifications as in like? Uh, rotors. Okay. With, uh, upgraded Vincent rotors, cross drills, slotted, what have you. Uh, the Brembo's are smaller. Um, but yeah, because my 350Z were 13 inch rotors. But they cool better. Right. So, it's um, just from my experiences and feedback with customers who track their car, uh, the small upgrade as in the brake rotors will uh, take away a lot of the uh, brake vibrations mm -hmm. due to warped rotors, so on and so forth. Obviously with my 350 having a brand new, you know, rebuilt Brembo system on there, it's the track version, so from 2004, uh, but with, like you said, the upgraded StopTech slotted rotors, stainless steel lines, and the higher temp brake fluid, uh, quite a few people who have driven my car have said it feels like you've got a lot of initial bite with my brakes. The, this car, in its current condition, doesn't. So that's why I'm having you do stainless steel brakes and, and flush it in new pads. Do you think a lot of the sponginess I feel right now is just wear and tear I mean, on these brakes? Possibly, but the initial bite is in the pad material. Right. That's where you feel the, the difference. You're going to feel... Uh, the sponginess go away with the stainless steel brake. Line. Right. I, I, I kind of scared myself a little bit in this car when I first got in it because I'm used to that initial bite to where I felt like I had to push the pedal down a quarter to a half to really get it to start biting. So I'm, I'm hoping when you put the HPS, because we're doing HPS pads in this, right? Yeah. yeah, with the stainless steel lines that it's going to feel better. Yes. You, you think it will? Cool. Proper braking, yes. And then the still and intakes we're doing, I hear, you hear a lot of you know, oh, the intakes don't make a huge difference, but apparently Stillen has stumbled onto some science with where they put their MAF sensor versus the length of the tube. So people are seeing real world, anywhere from 10 to 17 wheel horsepower improvements, uh, even though the filters are gonna be tucked up above the crash beam behind the nose. So there's not gonna even be necessarily a high pressure zone there. So it's not like a ram effect. But you, you've said you've sold a lot of them and you've had a lot of good experience with them. Yeah, that's our best seller and uh, really the most effective intakes that we found yeah. today. Yeah, because there's a lot of options out there when it comes to intakes. And you know, you've got AEM that brings it down you know, behind the wheel well here. Uh, you've got K&N Typhoon, which is you know, up in the engine bay with you know, some block off plates to try and block heat. Yeah, engine also makes them, they come down here. Right. One of the, one of the issues though is people complain about water. Yeah. When, when they're so low, especially, you know. Yeah. Obviously here in California, we don't really have that big of an issue. Right, but right. But in other states where they get a lot of rain and, and they kind of dip the car in the water. It's, it's funny. You, you don't get, want the filters that low. You got a lot of cold weather guys who 
don't worry about engine cooler or oil coolers as much, but here in the desert, that's like the biggest thing. Sitting in traffic on Thanksgiving day when I bought this, it was 65 degrees and the oil temp still got to 240 in traffic. And that we're, we're talking, you know, the car maybe saw 2000 RPM for 20 miles and it still got up to, it crept up to 240 degrees on a 63 degree day. I mean, that was crazy. I, that bugged me when I saw that. We got some things to do to this car. Chris is the man that Scott said is uh, who you want working on your car. So if you guys own a Nissan and you want the best work done in Southern California, apparently people drive in from out of state to see this guy. So we gotta, we've got the Jay's two cents of cars working on my car right now. Just like people from around the world want my computers, they want his, his automotive work done. Okay, so I just saw how long this vlog went. So I'm gonna go ahead and end this one now, guys. Uh, I know it's a little different car stuff. I've only done car things one other time on the main channel, but it's stuff that I'm into. So I know that I'm not the only one that's into that stuff. And I thought I'd go ahead and share it. But I also wanted the point of this vlog to be that as you can see, we do have things underway with the build. And as you can see, things are a little bit messy. It's kind of the way I like it though. I, I like it when things are a little disheveled. And as I've pointed out in the live stream, that box right there is going to have the parts for the build that I'm gonna be doing uh, next week, I hope. We're gonna be doing a giveaway of a computer. Yay! All right guys, time to get out of here. Thanks for watching. Follow on Twitter and Facebook and all that fun stuff and Instagram, and I will see you in the next one.